leave the stage and set the sound and the lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols, chirp the pews and all the decorations too, until the congregation's pew and have revival. Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken for your sins You can't be social And seek the Lord and wait for what he has in store And know that great is your reward So just be hopeful Cause you can sing all you want to Yes, you can is more than a song take a break from all the plans that you have made and sit at home alone and wait for god to whisper i beg him please to open up his mouth and speak Pray for real upon your knees until they blister. Shine a light on every corner of your eyes until the bright and lost in lies are in the open. Then read the word and put to test the things you've heard until your heart and soul are stirred and brought and broken. Cause you can. Christian Center. I know you guys turned on this morning expecting to see those two beautiful young ladies, but guess who's back? That's right, Pastor Rodney is back, and they did such a wonderful job that, you know, I'm just thinking about uh, seeing if I can get them to fill in for me at least twice 
a month. You know, they did such a wonderful job. And they called me up this morning to remind me that it was set up so wonderful for me not to mess this thing up. So they gave me some pointers. You see how that has transitioned? My children are now giving me the pointers of how to make this thing continue to succeed and be successful. And it was uh, tremendously successful. We received uh, numerous comments uh, asking for prayer as well as just some good uh, things that we can continue to do as we just talk about wellness and talk about anxiety because we experience it. Uh, one of the things that Jasmine, she told me, she said, Dad, I want you to make sure this morning that you do something that allows us to do something that is meditative. Yeah, do something that is meditative. And the reason for that is that we all need to focus. Somebody say focus. Focus. I know a bunch of you guys are at home and you're in the process of getting ready to do multitasking. But I want for you to just stop what you're doing for just a moment so that we can just begin to focus on what God wants to do in us and through us for this moment. Can we do that? You know, uh, the school teachers would do this thing where they would tell the kids, give me five. <laughs> so, you know, uh, what we come to learn as adults, as long as we're quiet, right, our mind continues to go other places. But what I learned over the years is that we can change our, our, our thoughts or we can change those things that's coming into us. And the way we do that is by counting out loud. You guys ready? Count with me to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So for those, for that count of 10, just notice that your mind wasn't thinking about other things. It was doing what? Counting. And so that's the way we began just to clear our minds, just like how G Jimmy Needham was sharing with us, clear the stage. You know, if we want for God to begin to fill us right, then we need to give him something to work with. Just think about for yourself. Do you cook better in your kitchen when it is crowded or when it is organized and you have a place to actually do your work? Yeah, for most of us, we need that counter space, don't we? And so I'm just going to ask you this morning, can you give God some counter space? Mm. Yeah, give God a little bit of counter space so that he can begin to do the work that he wants to do. But in Psalms chapter number 34, I, I, I love this because in verse 4, David says this. He says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. Wow, how many of us pray and God answers? Yes, he does, mm -hmm. doesn't he? He freed me from what? All my fears, mm -hmm. my anxieties, my worries. Why? Because he answered me. Verse 5 says, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. You know, that's something that we're going to spend some time talking about is how uh, shame is one of those things that comes over us. And because we feel ashamed or because we feel like we're not forgiven or whatever we may be feeling, we feel like we can't really come to God like we should. But I love how he says in verse 6, In my desperation I pray and the Lord, listen, he saved me from all my troubles. That's my prayer for us today is that God will save you from all your troubles how many people know sometimes our troubles include us? Mm. So somebody just go ahead and say, God save me from me. God save me from me. Yeah, so that we can get on and have some room, some space for you, God. That's our prayer today as we just continue to go down this series because God wants to see you well. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to see you well because I know God has great things and big things for you to do. And so we only can do that if we are well, physically, mentally, 
and spiritually. Are you guys ready for some more? Are you guys ready to take this worship service just a little bit higher? Amen. We want you guys to join with us in worship as Pastor Sharon comes and leads us. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Amen. We had an opportunity to have a wonderful anniversary last week. And some of you guys saw the pictures on Facebook. Uh, you know, Pastor Rodney and I, last year we said we shut the world down. People tell us, don't throw no more anniversary parties. We celebrated 30 years last year, had a great celebration, and then everything shut down, literally. And in talking to my sister-in-law, she reminded me that, you know, it was a blessing that occurred because there were people from everywhere last year that came um, from Seattle, which was originally the hub for COVID, uh, from California, from Michigan, from Louisiana, from Texas. All the hot spots. We had places, <laughs> we had people from all the hot spots. And then right here in Arizona, which we just, we didn't even know, we didn't have a clue at the time. But the blessing was that everybody came and nobody left here sick. To God be the glory. Amen? Amen. And so Pastor Ryan and I said, well, you know, we're going to go ahead and try to, you know, open this country up on our anniversary last week. And the girls, they took over for us. We didn't have to worry about it. We got a chance to watch them. And really just my heart was so full because you often wonder if what you're putting into people, if they get it. But it's in times like that that happen that you see that you were doing the right thing. Pastor Rodney, Pastor Sharon, Sharon, Rodney, you were doing the right thing with those two beautiful girls, Jasmine and Jessica, in depositing the things that we deposited in them, putting them, putting them in the places that they had to go. And sometimes people didn't understand some of the boundaries we put on them um, and then started opening that up. But God was doing a great work in them, and we're just so proud of what he did and what he continues to do. And so um, I hope you were blessed by the message last week. I know I certainly was. And uh, we just are excited about today. We're going to continue this series of wholeness, you know, becoming well and dealing with this thing called anxiety. A lot of people don't really, you know, understand. And, you know, we say, oh, I'm worried or I just, I'm feeling discontent about something. I'm not easy about something. I'm going to... I'm, I'm struggling with something. And sometimes, you know, uh, we won't let it go. And when we don't let it go, when it just constantly stays on our mind, we're dealing with anxiety. When we start having our body respond in a way, um, I know, you know, I, I was just telling, telling Rodney the other day, I said, you know, I really don't struggle with anxiety. But as I'm thinking about some of the manifestations of when I worry in college or early on and during the, the ministry about different things, my hair would fall out. Well, what is that? My body reacting to the stress I was feeling. What is that? Anxiety. So I guess I was in a denial about whether I had anxiety or not. And some of you guys might be feeling that too. You know, you might be wondering, why do I get these headaches? And, you know, I, or I just feel so lethargic. I can't do anything. Or, or I used to, as I'm thinking about it now, I used to carry stress in my legs. And things I didn't know that was anxiety, but that's really what it is. That definition last week of your body responding to the stress that's going on inside of you, that's anxiety. And so we want to deal with that. Long ago, when we were coming up in the ministry, we were told Christians don't get stressed. We're too stressed, too blessed to be stressed. Well, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Our body responds to stuff. But what is the truth out of that is that we cast our cares. We give everything to God. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, be anxious for no thing. That means don't worry about anything. But with all prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. That's giving it to him. And then it, tell, it further goes on to tell us what we should meditate on. Because if we're meditating on that thing, that's bothering us, the bills, the taxes that we have to do, the health issues that we're dealing with, 
the children that are not obeying or, you know, that insurmountable thing that we can't even imagine. If we're focusing on that, we have now placed that above the focus, is, which should be God. Because he's our source. And he's our everything. He says he's El Shaddai. He is the one that can take it all. And so our job is to just give it to him. And when we do that, we begin to release, we begin to allow him to release some things in us. And so in that scripture in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it just kind of tells us to begin to meditate on things that are good, lovely, and of good report. Now, how do you do that when you're looking at the news? Turn it off. And focus on something else. The kids, they like to watch something called Avatar. Um, not Avatar, um, anime. anime. And, you know, I kept on, I tried to, like, what is this anime thing? When I was a little kid, anime, it, it, what I, the closest thing I can equate it to, for those of you who don't know what anime is, is there was something called speed racing when I was a little girl. When we come home from church, I'd watch speed racing. It's this little cartoon character, and he had a little race car. You know, he had his little storyline. Well, anime characters kind of take on that, that um, artistic form, but they have a whole series of, actually a plethora of, things that you can watch and they tell stories and they're like 20 minute segments and you can just watch that to just get some dumbed down thinking out of the way and and you can laugh but you can also see some encouragement in it and you can see some storylines building um i'm not really an anime follower but i did participate with Je jessica a few weeks ago just so i could understand what it is and so that's just an example of how you can just think on something else think on something else or get creative do something different and watch it become something beautiful. Amen? Or just go outside and look at the beauty that's in the sky. Because God is in control. I don't know if you see my shirt, but it says God is in control. And a person like me, I like to be in control, but this is a reminder for me Step back so to say God is in control. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this morning, let's give him the control. Let's invite him into our space. Let's invite him to just have dominion in our homes, in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. Let's, in, let's invite him to just receive everything that we have. And as we go into our praise time and our worship time, lift everything that's bothering you and burdening you up to him. And then open up your heart to receive what he has. You know, one of the songs we're going to sing is Waymaker. And I like this song, especially now when we're doing this series, is because sometimes we can't see a way out. But Jesus, he is our way maker. Last year, or no, I guess it was two years, two ago. years ago, we went to a conference, and I shared it with the church here locally, and I may have shared it where you heard it, but it's, it's worth bearing a reminder. The minister, he was showing an illustration for the kids that he had a little girl come up and stand on the platform. And he had him turn his back, turn her back. And you know the whole faith fall where you just trust, the trust fall, and you fall back and you trust that somebody's going to catch you. Well, she didn't know this minister, this minister whatsoever. He's from another town. She's from here. And so she gets up there, she's all gun ho wanting to be seen, and she gets up there, he says, okay, turn around, and I want you to fall. And she first kind of stopped for a second, but then she fell, and he caught her. And so he kept talking to her, he had her stand there, and he said, don't turn around, and he kept talking, he said, did you trust me? And she's like, yeah, and she just kept talking, he kept talking, and he kept moving further and further away from the stage till he was actually way back in the back of the uh, congregation. And it was like, she, he was like, can you hear my voice? And she was, yes. And he said, sounds like it's far away, yes. I said, but do you still, still trust me? She says, yes. He said, okay, go ahead and fall. Well, what he had already lined up was for somebody, two people to go up there and catch her when she fell. But he didn't know he was lining them up. She didn't know he was lining them up to catch her. And the whole point of that is, even though she couldn't see him, even though she couldn't feel him, he was at work trying to create a space, a comfort place 
for that, for that girl to trust and fall into. Similarly, we have to be the same way. We have to trust that God is in control and he is making a way for everything that we can't see our way through. Amen. So let's give God some high praise right now and then we're going to sing that song. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt you this morning. We praise you in this place. You are worthy of all the praise and all the glory. We give the highest praise to you because you, Lord God, are our God. You are the God that's more than enough. You are the God that is sovereign. You are the God that is in control. You are our way maker. You are our miracle worker. You are our promise keeper. You are the way in the darkness, God. We thank you because you are right here. All those things we talk about who you are, but you're right here with us. And as we get ready to enter into today's worship, we invite you to rest, rule, and abide and have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, we give you dominion and control over every aspect. Be our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth, our lips. Be the, be the one that sets the agenda for today. Thank you for being here in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. All right. Well, you guys ready to give him the highest praise? It's every praise by Hezekiah Walker. Amen. Ready, guys. All right. Put your hands together. Some of y'all know this song. All right. We want to lift him up. Come on, y'all. Let's sing every praise. Here we go. Every praise, every praise. 
Oh, how he 
Amen. How many people are glad that God knows <clears throat> your name? Amen. Yeah, I know that. It's, it's wonderful that he knows your friend's name, right? But it's even better because he knows your name. You know, that just helps us to set this thing up very well. Because the uh, thing that I was thinking about is that we know Jasmine and we know <coughs> Jessica and we know that they did a great job last week. But isn't that something when you can just sit back and say, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know them. And that's how God likes to say it about us. He likes to say, I know him. Kind of like how he said it about Job, you know. He says, do you not know? I know Job. I know what it is. No, you don't know Job. <laughs> Job, Job will turn on him. No, no, Job ain't going to turn on me. Test it. <coughs> he tested Job, and what did we learn? We learned that Job, though he went through hard times, <coughs> him and God continued to walk. Amen. And that's what God wants us to do. So, you know, we're continuing with this wellness series, right, about anxiety and another way of just talking about our feeling of worry, our feeling of fear, all those things that basically <coughs> causes us to kind of freeze up. And so I think that uh, Jasmine, she said it well. She said, it's our body telling us there's something going on. <coughs> and I like that. But what God wants for us to know is that he wants for us to be well. Somebody say well. Well. God wants for us to be well. And so in Third John, he talks about us being well. So he wants us to be well physically, mentally, and spiritually. 
That's what God wants for us. And in order for these things to take place, we need a community. Somebody say community. Community. One of the things as we look at this verse is that we're going to see that uh, it was the apostle John who was what? Praying for Gaius, who was a person that was a part of his community. <coughs> see, it's all kind of things that takes place when we have a life-giving community. Amen. So before we get started, we want to just ask you that question. Do you have a life-giving community that can pull you out hmm. of your anxiety? <clears throat> that can help you to locate when you are feeling some kind of way, amen? Hmm. Don't you need a community to tell you that you are doing too much? Hmm. Don't you need a community to encourage you, to tell you that you can do all things, amen? Yes, amen. God wants for us to be a part of this life-giving community. So one of the things that my children often ask me is that how do I deal with the many pressures of life? You know, of working, of being a pastor, of being a dad. And you know, it's something that I learned a long time ago was this, is that I learned how to cast my cares. Amen. You say, so how do you do that? Well, what it looks like for me is that, you know, when I get to the place and life begins to just overwhelms me, right, I write down that big thing that is, that, that I think that is big. I write it down. And then I get it, and I crumble it up in a, on that paper up, and then I hold it out. And I say, you know, God, these are my cares, and I don't want them. And he says to me, he says, well, cast them. So I take that wad of paper, and I just <coughs> talk, saying to myself that God has it now. I don't. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing that I do is I go find something that I like to do that I enjoy. Amen? See, a lot of times we try to make things complicated, but God wants for us to keep it simple. I just have two steps. I cast my cares. I find something that I can enjoy. And then my third step is repeat one and two. I do that until I begin to feel God's peace come upon me. See, sometimes, you know, we say we cast our care, but we're still holding it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, you got to cast that thing and, and, and to it till, till it's gone. So that's what God wants for us to work on is to cast our care. So this morning, how many people need to cast some care? Amen. Come on, I know you don't have time to write everything down on your piece of paper, but just symbolically, if you had a piece of paper, write that stuff down, wad it up, put it in your hand. Now, we're going to all cast our cares together, amen, because mm -hmm. God cares for us. Y'all ready? Yes. All right, you got that piece of paper, you ready to cast your care? Now, toss that thing. All right, God has those cares. So for the next five minutes, <coughs> can I just have your undivided attention so that we can just go through some things. Uh, in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, Dear friends, I am praying that all is well. Amen. I'm praying that all is well with you and that you enjoy some good health. Amen. Amen. It's nice when you have a community that wants you to enjoy good health. The same way that your process, the same way that you prosper spiritually. Mm -hmm. So notice this is that John said this three times. Three times John used this thing, goodness or wellness. First is the general encouragement. The same phrase which starts in the verse was used to introduce Gaius. The second, John prays for general blessings. And then last, he appeals to the help for Gaius. He says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Yeah. What I like about this is that he called him his beloved. So that means that, you know, this was somebody that was important to him. Amen? He was important. So he was praying for him. He says, I pray that you may prosper in all things. <clears throat> Prosperity and mental health. Yes. And general well-being. Amen? Amen. Can I say that again? Because I know we don't like to talk about mental health, but 
it is a real thing and that we all need to pay attention to our mental health yeah. and our well-being. And then sometimes we just need encouragement because there are people that are wearing us down. They're getting on our nerve <laughs> as it was with Diaphras after Gaius. And then he says, and being held. I'm praying John was concerned about his physical health. Amen? That's what a life-giving community does. They say that I am concerned about you, not just spiritually, because how many people know that we, it's easy for us to say, well, God, what you're going over to brother so-and-so's house, when you go over to sister so and God said, that's what I assigned you to do. <laughs> you need to be doing the going. Mm -hmm. Amen? He wants for us to do the going because they are part of our, our community. community. That is our responsibility to go and see about them. See that they are well. God wants to see that we are well physically, mentally, and physically. Just as your soul prospered. Gaius was in a good spiritual health. Somebody say spiritual health. Spiritual health. He walked with a clear conscience before the Lord. Hmm. John's hope for him is that his general well-being will be as good as his spiritual well-being. Amen? Mm -hmm. Woo! I wish you a general prosperity that equates with your spiritual prosperity. So in other words, a prosperous soul is a soul that is in right relation to the Lord. So what I love about it right here is this. Here's the application. The church needs more people with good spiritual health. Many people give little concern to the soul. If our physical health corresponds to our spiritual health, many of us would be in bad shape. And if our financial state were as bad as our spiritual state, we would be bankrupt. So what are we to do? If you had time, you can go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, and just follow Jesus. Amen? Jesus say, come on, I want y'all not to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> I want y'all not to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. What I'm telling you is this, is that don't worry about it. Right. Come on. This is how Jesus began to get us lined up so that we can have well-being. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. God wants for us to get to the place where we just learn how to not worry as much. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not an easy thing when we're trying to do everything by ourselves. But can I say this? God didn't create you to be by yourself. He created you to be a part of a community that can help you. And that's one of the things that we see. We see it take place. We see it take place, and we see people literally begin to prosper. One of the things that they tell us all the time in seminary and in Bible school is this, is that people that get prayed for in the hospital see a faster recovery. Yes, we know that prayer changes things, but there's something to be said about a community that calls your name up. Amen. Amen. They call your name up before the Lord. Amen. And you begin to watch God work. He's working for our good. good. Yes, he's working for our good. You know, I love this because the next one that we're going to go to and we're going to look at is the person by the name of Joshua. Y'all know Joshua. You know Joshua, he hung out, right, with Moses, and he hung out with all those people, right? And their whole story was this, is that they were delivered from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And along the way, God had gave them a promise. He delivered them from those that was capturing them. And they found themselves in the wilderness. Wow, I went from... Egypt, to now I'm in a wilderness. God is providing for me, but somehow the people 
found that they still were not content. Mm. Amen. And they spent 40 years walking through this wilderness. Mm. Walking through this wilderness, making what we call Sinai laps. Yeah. You know those laps where you know, I know there's an answer, but I'm going to keep on going the way I want to go. Because <laughs> that's the way I've always done it. Even though God has told me, all I got to do is believe, mm -hmm. and then I can achieve. I'm still going to do it the way I want to do it. Mm -hmm. How many people have ever found themselves just walking around doing the same thing, getting nowhere? And this begins to put what? Pressure, stress, anxiety upon your life. But one day, God called up Joshua, mm -hmm. and he began to give Joshua a charge. And he says, Joshua, guess what? <laughs> You're going to be the person to get them out of the wilderness. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean the best leader of all wasn't able to get them out of this <coughs> wilderness, but you are calling me to get these people out of the wilderness? So you can begin to see that Joshua, he grew up in a life where people had settled or they had talked themselves into believing that that was the best that they can have. And this put a lot of pressure and anxiety upon them. But I like what God told Joshua. And this is the thing that will help us to begin to get us out of this place that we're in. The place that we're in is not good for us if we're still stressing about all of the pressures of life. Now, the thing that enabled Joshua to be able to overcome this is that he had a tremendous mentor by the name of Moses who taught him a few things. Amen? We need good people in our lives to teach us some things. Amen? That helps us. You know, people didn't say, look, you know, you can do it the way you want to, but I'm just telling you, I've been through this thing a few times, and there's some things that I can pass on to you that's going to help you. So for 40 years, these people walked around in the wilderness. And now Joshua was called to do what Moses wasn't able to do. So in Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 6, he says, are you guys ready, Joshua? Chapter 1, verse number 6. He says, be brave and strong. Well, what's the reason for that, to be brave and to be strong? Because you're getting ready to lead a people from a place that they was familiar with to a place that they didn't know. A place that will be flowing in milk and honey. You're going to need to be strong because you are the one. The one who will help his people take possession of the land which I pledged to give to their ancestors. So I'm calling you into a place to begin to receive your inheritance. He says in verse 7, be very brave. Wait, wait, wait now. Now I'm beginning to feel something. Because you don't say it this twice, God. God says something twice, then that means what? Somebody needs to what? Pay attention. He says, be brave and strong as you carefully obey all the instructions. Somebody say instructions. Instructions. Yeah, you're going to need to pay attention to the instructions that Moses, my servant, commanded you. He says, don't deviate even a bit from it, either to the right or the left. Then you will have what? Success. Success wherever you go. Never stop speaking about this <clears throat> instruction scroll. Recite it day and night so that you can carefully obey everything written in it. Then you will accomplish your objectives. You will succeed. I have commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. God gives him the question. What is it that I told you? To go ahead and be bold in, to walk in. 
Haven't I told you to be strong? Don't be alarmed or terrified before the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. So here's the piece that we get to walk away with is, is this, is that we can't change our circumstances. There's some things that we just got to go through. Mm -hmm. Mm, can, can, can I just say that? Is, is that, you know, we want everything to be better now. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is not going to be better now. It's only going to get better as you learn how to walk through, as you learn how to focus on your part and go through. Hmm. So I thought this was a series about anxiety. Now you're causing anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but it's to remind you that God has given you some instructions to get through. So here's the thing that Jasmine was encouraging me this morning about, is that not everybody knows how to hear from God. Mm -hmm. And that is true. That is true. But can I say this? God wants for everybody to be able to hear. Because the Bible tells us faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. And hearing by the word of God. So for, for you who may be out there and you're saying, well, how do I even start? You know, you start by doing something simple. Y'all ready for this? You sit. Okay. Second thing you do is be quiet. Oh, uh, this right now is not feeling good, is it? But we sit and we be quiet. Because what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up to be able to hear. So to give you this piece of instructions of what I do is that I sit quietly and I get just one note card and a pen. And I sit and I just listen. I don't ask for clarity. I don't ask for, you know, what they mean. I just write down the first words that just began to come through my mind. And as I write those down on the postcard, I just begin to just quiet and just pray to myself. Okay, God, I know you're speaking to me. And I'm just going to just sit here for another two minutes and just wait on you. And after I've sat for my two minutes, I come back up with my card and I look at it, and I say, oh, wow. Man, look at the words that I have here. Mm, wow. God is saying right here, it says, pay attention. Wow, I wonder what that could mean. <laughs> I, I wonder what that could mean. I wonder if that's God speaking to me to pay attention. Well, <laughs> let's see. How do we take that? So now that I know I need to pay attention, I open up my Bible and I just begin to just read. And then there's words that just begin to jump off the pages to me. What is that saying right there? It's saying pay attention mm -hmm. to what? Those words, the ones that are right there, the ones that is drawing your attention. That is God beginning to speak to you. Because God wants you to be able to, he wants you to be able to understand the words that he has written to you. That's what he did for Joshua. So the three things to help us become spiritually well. Amen. That God wants for us to become spiritually well. Doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes, God does. So the first thing I wrote here is that. God wants for us to obey his instructions. Amen? Amen. He said, what instructions might that be? That would be the instructions that's written in the Bible. God wants for us to obey the ones that he has given us. Right? And I put a note in here, not some of them, but all of them. What are the instructions he has given you? What is the vision that he has given you? Hmm. You know, I, I kind of love this because this is the part where, you know, people begin to ask multiple questions, okay? What are the instructions he's giving me, okay? 
<laughs> you, you know the thing that you're going through right now in life? Mm -hmm. You're in it, right? And you got to get through it. Through it. How did you get there? Just like with the children that ended up in the wilderness. They got there because God put them there. Mm -hmm. Not only did God put them, he sustained them there. But it was their own unbelief that kept them there. Going so you have to ask yourself, the question is that, is it my unbelief that's keeping me in my wilderness? Is it my unbelief that's causing me to continue to walk around doing the same thing day in and day out? You have to ask yourself, that's what you call locating yourself. The word will help you to locate where you are. Am I moving forward or am I just sitting still? What's going on? The second thing is this. He says, don't change what God told you to do. If Joshua was going to be successful, he couldn't change what God had told him to do. So in other words, God had told him to lead the people into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. See, a lot of times this is where we begin to worry. We begin to fret. Is that we want to go and do the thing that God told us not to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Can I go a little bit deeper? Can I tell you about for me? You know, the times that I feel anxiety the most is when I'm getting ready to do the thing God told me not to do. Mm -hmm. When I'm getting ready to do the things my parents told me, don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that my body is telling me, Rodney, this ain't good. And I'm telling myself, I can do this. The guy said, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> I can just begin to feel, you know, this this, this thing begin to overwhelm me. <laughs> where it's like, this is something I shouldn't do. Mm. You know, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Oh, yeah. Telling you that, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. And every time I've ever gotten myself in good trouble, <laughs> bad trouble, and things that, you know, this ain't good for me, is because I didn't listen to mm -hmm. it. I wanted... To do the thing that I was told not to do. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes, you know, we don't always hear things clearly about what to do. But one of the things I know about God is that he always tells you the thing not to do. And, and that's the piece that we got to learn how to do. He tells you not to do something, don't do, it. don't do it. And so as I've gotten older, I've learned how not to do the things he tells me not to do. Does that always mean I know what to do? Sometimes I don't. But I just sit there. And I listen to what not to do, and I don't do those things, and I find I have a whole lot more peace just not getting involved in the stuff I shouldn't. Mm. So the third thing was this, to help you along your way, is keep talking about God's plan. Amen. And then Joshua just simply just had to keep talking about God's plan. Amen. He's talking about what God will do. Amen. Not about what God's not going to do. You ever notice how the enemy comes to you and he tries to talk you out of talk you out of what God is going to do for you? You know, it comes in things like, man, you're not going to get that loan. <laughs> Come on, you're not going to get the house that, that you believe in for. You know how the enemy comes and says, you're not going to even lose weight. He's trying to tell you what's not going to happen and God is telling you what, what can happen. <laughs> This is what I know. God says is that it's the willing and the obedient that, that shall good. eat of the good, good of the amen. land. Amen. amen. That God wants you well. Amen. amen. Can I say that again? God wants you well. well. God wants you to prosper and be in hell even as your soul prospers. Yeah. God wants that for all of us. I understand some people may be saying to themselves, but yeah, but right now I'm going through a try. But God wants for you to get through your trial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
He wants that for you. Yeah, Pastor Sharon, she said in Philippians, it says that, he says, be anxious for mm -hmm. nothing, but in all things in prayer and supplication. So in other words, what God is telling you is that you ain't got to get yourself stressed out about it. Come on. All you got to do is just work with God. Mm -hmm. mm. Can I go just a little bit deeper about that? Uh, 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 about working with God. Amen? Amen. Learn how to work with, with God. God, not against God. Right. What does it look like when you're working with God? I, I think it looks like this story that I remember in Kings about the widow who had got to the place where they had nothing left to eat but just a little meal. And the man of God, he showed up and said, can you make me a cake first? <laughs> he showed up. Yeah, he, 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 he showed up. Sure God. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and do it. God is with us. She began to work with God. As she began to make that meal, she began to see God replenish the little that she had with much. Amen? Maybe, maybe, maybe that one was a little far stretched for you. But how many people remember working with God when the little boy showed up amongst all those people mm -hmm. who didn't have nothing to eat? He said, this is what I got. Jesus, right. you, know, you can have it. His five loaves and two fish. And mm -hmm. he was working with God. And what we know is that all those people got fed that day. That's working with God. God, I don't have much, but what I do have, I want to give to you right? because I'm believing that something good is going to happen. Amen. Amen. I'm working with you, God, because you told me in the word that you know the plans that you have for me. There are plans to prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. And a future. I'm working with God. Amen? Mm -hmm. So what that looks like is that God's doing his part and I'm doing my part. And what we're going to see is something wonderful. See, what Joshua was doing was working with God. And because he was working with God, they began to see something wonderful. My brothers and my sisters, I leave you with this, is that God wants you well. Yes. Hey, man, he wants you well. He wants you whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he wants for you. That's what Jasmine and Jessica was sharing with us, is that God wants us well. Yeah. Amen? And so we're talking right now about anxiety, but, you know, that's just one thing that we have to overcome. There's other things in life that God wants you to be able to, to overcome. And so uh, this is just my style because this is who God called me to be. He called me to be a, a pastor that spits <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and this is how I know how to talk. Way Jasmine and Jessica and I talk, they how to talk in a calm, still voice <laughs> to get you to a different place. All I know how to do is just say it the way God tells me to say it to get you to the place where you can believe. Amen. <sighs> well, I close with that. Get to a place where you can believe. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I know that's hard and that's difficult, but here's the thing that I've come to learn is that, you know what? If God asks you to do it, then that means he's going to provide. Come on. Come on. You, you got to learn how to accept the little things. Amen? It may be a person who comes by that just encourages you in the little thing. Or, or maybe it may be that person who just comes and just says, man, I don't know why. I just need to give you this dollar. See, that's God encouraging you in the little things to set you up for the bigger things. What we learn is that God orders our steps. So it's the steps that we make. Not to take the big giant leap. Just take the one step. 
That's how I deal with all the pressures of life, is that I just make it small enough to deal with it. Yeah, mm -hmm, financially, same thing. I learned a long time ago. I mean, can't pay a thousand dollars, but I can pay a hundred dollars. If I learn how to break it all up, mm -hmm. I can pay a hundred dollars at a time. That's right. Amen. If I can pay a hundred dollars at a time, eventually I'm gonna get it paid off. Amen. You feel me? Same thing with life. Sometimes we just have to make it small enough so that we can get through. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know there's big mountains that's in front of you, but it's just like on the drive. Is that you don't do 10,000 feet all at once. First, you start off, it says now climbing to 2,000 feet. You're like, oh, I wonder what that means. 2,000 feet. That means you're going up. I'm going up. And you get to 2,000 feet, it says now climbing 4,000 feet. And you just keep going up. The next thing you know, it's like, I can't believe we just climbed 10,000 feet. feet. It didn't even feel like it. Why did it feel like that? Because they were setting you up so that you can succeed by doing it 2,000 feet at a time. Mm -hmm. That's how God does it. That's how God begins to help us to deal with those things that are overwhelming us. He says, just take the one step. Mm -hmm. Just say the one word. The Amen. Y'all remember how Jackson taught us that? One just thing. learn how to just be able to just say, I got this one verse. Be still and know, know that I am, am God. See how you just begin to digest that just a little bit. Come on. It's one of the things that we have to teach our children. Look, baby, you ain't got to speak all the food in your mouth. Just take one bite at a time. That's the thing that God is encouraging us today. Is that if we can just do just a little bit at a time, we'll begin to see the big thing that has been overwhelming us begin to come down to a small thing. In closing, I love it how Jesus says this. He says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, and then it wasn't nothing big, it says just have the faith the size. Of the mustard seed. I don't know if you guys ever looked at a mustard seed, but it is something that is real small. He says you can do something with it. That's all God wants you to do is to do something with what He has given you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stop worrying about what you do not have and focus on the little mustard seed that you do have. Take that and put it to work and Amen. watch God do something. So, Father, I just come before you, and I thank you so much that we had this opportunity to share. The Lord, that we know that you want us well, and that your word has shown me so many people that have been like us, that have been stressed out our minds, ready to give it all up. But God, you showed up. And you showed them how to overcome. Just a little bit at a time. And so, Father, I'm asking you to continue to show up and teach people how to do just a little bit at a time. And watch a good thing come to pass. Father, move. Mm, yeah, yeah. In a powerful way. Help us to receive the small things as we go through it. In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Y'all come on. Give me a big shout. Say thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. God is just so good, guys. All the wonderful things he continues to do. He's just so good. And so with that being said, we want to go ahead and transition this morning, amen, to give you an opportunity to give that if you want to, right? There's three ways that you can give here at Acts. The first way is that you can give by text, right? And as long as we've been doing this now, I still don't have that memorized. That number is 520-530. Oh. Yeah. Five, two, zero, three, 
five, five, two, eight, two, zero. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad you guys already got it programmed into your phone. <laughs> so all you got to do is hit that, put in your amount, and hit send. And that's the first way that you can give. The second way that you can give is that you can go to our website at www.axcc.org and click on a tab that says Donate, Give, and it'll take you to that page. And then the third way that you can give is by mail, by putting in 3371 South Vine Street, Chandler, Arizona, 85248. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we have completed that. But for those of you who have followed us and have continued to uh, write to us, to share your comments and your feedback, we just want you to know that we received that and that we have prayed for you and we're praying with you that God will help you to be able to overcome whatever anxiety you may be experiencing in life. What we want you to know here at Acts Christian Center is that we're a community. Mm -hmm. Amen. And what we do is that we work together. Right. Amen. So that we all can get across to the other side. So I just want you to know that you are important to us and thank you for sharing with us. And we're going to continue to go through this wellness series and just talking about some things and sharing some wonderful principles of what it takes to be able to overcome it because we understand that it's important. It's important. What you're going through is important. And I do believe that we're all going to be able to get through this thing. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, what we like to tell you here at Acts Christian Center, right? This is our closing. This is the thing that, you know, God has ingrained in us. And that is, we love you. And I do believe that, you know, love is that thing that helps us all get through. We respect you. So, in other words, is that, you know... I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. And then the third thing is that you're part of my community. So thank you so much for continuing to tune in with us. We appreciate and we love you so much. So until next week, God bless you. Amen.